Hey guys, welcome back to Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader. Let's just get straight into it. Hit these ships, baby. You are facing several Eldari scout ships. The Xenos are in no hurry to attack and time seems to have slowed down. One wrong move and carnage will ensue. Ah. Uh. Hmm. They're in no hurry to attack. Well, let's ask Elliot to help us negotiate then. Elliot's speech is met with a torrent of Eldari abuse that is too much for even your elucidator. The Xenos accuse her of betraying her kind by conspiring with the monkey and unceremoniously cut the connection, yet their ships are no longer blocking the way. <laughs> okay, well... We at least didn't have to fight them because if they were the Eldari. Since we have Elliot on board, don't really want to upset her by killing more of her people unnecessarily, so... Uh, I think we're gonna just go back to the, the... I guess the full universe map, the Corona's Expanse map, and go from there. Okay, so... Oops. All the way up there wasn't what I was intending to do. Uh, so let's go to Tenebrous Aquae. Uh, let's make it unsafe. I'm not sure I want to take the deadly, deadly um, travel route. So. We don't necessarily have to make this safe because we're only... I, I don't see us traveling through this this lane that often, so unsafe is, I think, best option. The engine decks were transformed into exotic gardens. Several chambers sprouted foliage vaguely resembling the plants on Terra, although they exhibited a glass-like surface polished to a mirror sheen. While reflections in the plants perfectly copied the surrounding objects, they did not show a single living being. Those who peered into them saw grotesque blood-covered creatures instead, not unlike bloated abyssal fish with a pair of clawed limbs, sometimes more. Unable to destroy the sinister growth, the voidsmen covered it with plasteel hoods until leaving the immaterium, finally ridding the vessel of the corruption. No perils of the warp prevented the vessel from returning to real space. Okay. Unknown ships, space battle, hulk. Wow, okay. Quite a lot of stuff here. Ah, uh, you know what? Let's save it here and we'll address the space battle first. A violent battle is unfolding before the rogue trader's eyes. Patrol ships from the quarter fleet are tearing apart two small Eldari vessels. Once they are finished with them, the void ships give chase after the third already damaged vessel, clearly with intention to, of destroying it as well. Seeing the last ship's impending death, Elliot calls out to Lord Captain, her voice trembling slightly. Only the rogue trader's intervention can save her kin from the massacre. Uh, send a message to Incendia Quarters Fleet, order, ordering them to stop the battle. The Vox Master relays the Lord Captain's demand to stop the battle and soon returns with a reply. According to the Quarter ships, this group of Xenos are malicious criminals. They are guilty of raiding this system's planets and robbing merchant vessels. Incendia Quarters void ships are intent on performing their duty before the Emperor and is exterminating the Xenos. Elliot's son sullenly watches the unfolding chase through the stained glass window of the captain's bridge. She grimly concedes that no crime should go unpunished, except her kin are, were flying transport ships. It would have been impossible for them to rob a ship, let alone launch a planetary raid. Vessels such as theirs simply lack the fire power to do so, the monkey are lying. Commerce 30, Coercion 30. Demand that Quarters warship cease fire immediately. 
Uh, ask quarters patrol for proof of the Xenos' transgressions. Let's go with that one. The patrols, Captain reluctantly admits that there is no conclusive proof. This system is sometimes the target of pirate raids. However, this changes nothing for his servants has, have no mercies for the enemies of humanity. Analyze the intact Xeno ship. Despite the presence of some weaponry, the Xeno ship is more likely meant for transporting cargo or the Xenos themselves rather than direct combat. Uh, let's demand they cease. Unwilling to engage in open battle against the flagship of a foreign dynasty, the patrol reluctantly leaves its prey and retreats to the edge of the system. Meanwhile, the wounded Xeno ship is rapidly distancing itself from the recent battlefield, attempting to hide in the shadow of the nearest world. Every attempt to contact it is met with frustration and the Voxmaster reports that the vessel is in deplorable condition. Who knows how much more the Xeno technology can endure before the irreparable happens. The, the Eldari are too scared and resentful of the Monkey for the recent deaths of their kin to answer incoming hail. Despite this, Iliad is certain that she can convince them to cooperate with the Elantar if she is allowed to speak with them. Go for it. Failed. Jeez, really? Oh, it's a 40% chance. Iliad appeals to her kin's wisdom, but the words of the outcast cannot make them trust Monkey. The pain of loss fills their Eldari hearts. Only recently did the humans destroy two vessels of the children of Asurian, and now they offer aid. Worse, they offer aid through the mouth of their captive sister. No, the Eldari will not fall for this trick. Trying to outpace the pursuit of the next Monkey vessel, the Eldari overload their void ship drives. One of the damaged engines is unable to bear the strain. Before the eyes of a hundred officers, the Xeno ship flashes a fiery light blue through the stained glass windows as thousands of tiny shards disperse across the system. The bridge officers openly rejoice, offering prayers to the Emperor. Today the expanse is cleansed and more filth the enemies of humanity. What is this if not his providence? and only the thin figure of the Eldari stands motionless against the backdrop of the intricate stained glass windows mourning the fallen, fallen in solemn silence. Once the pain in Elliot's soul is numb, she turns to the Lord Captain and nods, short gesture of gratitude for the attempt to save those who could hardly be saved. Some time after, Elliot comes to the Lord Captain Haggard still holding on to hope. She says that she came aboard the monkey vessel and set off into the darkness in the hopes of finding a kin, but found only corpses slaughtered by humanity's hatred. And though she and the Lord Captain were not always in agreement, the Atlantark still tried to lend a helping hand. In gratitude, as she promised, she shares the coordinates of a kin's cache. Ah, that kind of sucks. I'm curious to know what would happen if the Eldari did get saved, though. Or at least some of their diary gets saved. What uh, Elliot would do and what, whether that would somehow increase relations between humans and elves. Although I highly doubt that would even happen. So I guess a future playthrough will reveal that sort of information if if you know, it can succeed in doing that. Okay, the mirror. Save it. This planet is devoid of even the most primitive of forms of life. However, the crew has made quite a strange discovery. A mirror lying right in the center of a huge crater. A completely ordinary mirror in a frame by all appearances in pristine condition. Ooh, I don't know. I want to take the mirror aboard the ship destroyed immediately. The crew blasts the crater, raising a cloud of dust that blocks the Orga array. Confirming the mirror's destruction is impossible for the time being, but it could not have survived such a powerful explosion. Definitely not. <laughs> I don't like how that's phrased, because, uh, yeah. Okay. Let's see what the Hulk is. A vigilant member of the Orga crew has detected a small Xenos vessel drifting through the void. 
The ship is unpowered and shows no sign of being crewed. Uh, send out a boarding shuttle. The squad boarded the vessel without issue. Corrosion had laid waste to the ship systems which led to the death of the entire crew. The interior is full of Eldari corpses. No weapons were found on board and the dead Xenos, judging by their clothing, were not part of any warrior cast. Merely the crew of the now defunct ship. The Xenos Eliot claims to have recognized the symbols on the dead Eldari's clothes. They were civilian refugees from craft world Crudera. Okay. Interesting. Should we have a mining world? It looks to me like a filthy, inhospitable hole where loyal subjects freely toil in fathomless mine shafts centuries after century, until usually until death. I wonder if we visited the hulk, would that have made a difference to um, the Eldari being attacked or not? More plasteel. Yeah. We have plenty at the moment. Uh, unknown ships. Okay. Destroyer's gonna attack my frigate, I suppose. This thing's dropped a few of the missiles. Ooh, that's some nice damage. Okay, that's an. I've actually done this fight a few times and. Each time either I die or my frigate dies, so I'm trying to do it so that both of us survive if we can. This, however, has never happened before. It only dropped one bunch of missiles and then the frigate itself didn't move, so that's interesting. Let's move over here then. Oh, I know. It's out of range or something? I don't know what happened there. Let's move here then. Okay. Uh, let's use dorsal missiles to try and take out some of these torpedoes because they are really nasty. Well, that didn't work. Hmm, got another one, that's good. Uh, let's see how much damage this will do to the... Even hit the frig? Yeah, it did, okay. Taking out the torpedoes, that's good. Let's hit the frigate again. Did some damage. Not very much. Okay. Hmm. Okay. How do we want to play this? Four shots, three shots. Okay, let's do it like this. Okay, now I flip it around. Okay, so we don't have to worry about torpedoes for now. Exposed vulnerabilities. It's on that side, okay. Stuff that up. Should have done that before. What is this thing gonna do now? Attack my frigate, I suppose. Get oh, it attacks us. That's fine. Spreads the damage out a little bit, which is okay with me. I don't know how this, what this frigate's gonna do though. It 
didn't attack at all. What the heck? That's odd. Okay, just miss with those dorsal ones. Okay. This guy's going to chase us around a bit. I'm closer around this way. All right. Can't use Empyrean. Can use this one. Miss. Really? That's annoying. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, we're not going to reach with any other weapons. That's a bit annoying. Who's the destroyer going to attack? Me or my frigate? Looks like me. Yeah. That's fine. That's okay. Now he's dropped other torpedoes, which is not good. Nice. Praise nice. The That's really good. Okay, we took out one of them. Alright, took out two of them. These are the long range ones. Uh, let's head forwards. Nope. Okay. Perfect. Uh, can oh no, I can't hit them anymore. Side is longer. So let's go this way. Uh, all right, let's scan them. Okay, that side does more damage, so try and attack them from there. They have to do a big turn, so we should be out of range from their second weapons. Yep. Okay. Go here. a little bit. Okay, nice. And let's just do the storm. We don't kill it, really? Okay. Let's move here. And let's destroy it. Really? Come on. Okay, finally. Oh, technological superiority was obvious. Void Drakari trophy, 75%. 
36%. Okay, nice. Okay, so now we have to chart new routes. Okay, so we can come up here, go through to there. That seems alright. At some point we have to come back down here. Uh, let's go to Nola Septon, but we'll save it first. Okay, chart new routes, should be, is there a direct shot? Yep, that's nice. Let's visit. Okay, everything looks pretty calm, at least in the system itself. Planets, however, is another question, so let's see what we find. Promethean. Seven Promethium is quite a lot. Hang on a sec. Contracts. Needs seven people. Twelve people. Seven people. Okay, so we really need people, it seems, to fulfill some of these contracts. But it'll cost us to get rid of these people. That's not so great. Yeah, so we have four people at the moment. Three profit factor, and it'll cost seven people to get three profit factor. That's kind of nasty. Let's check out projects first. Cure for sloth. Capella biologists. 5% more damage to Xenos. Seeker of the weak. All enemies suffering from burning, toxin, or bleeding suffer 30% dodge penalty. Scorcher. Pelobiologist. Melee. Okay, so what do we need? We need Capella, Biologists, or Dark Sages. Chirurgeon Med Kit, Prophet Factor, Xenotech, Kasbalic Emission, Secret of the Winter Scales, Prophet Factor over 35, Provisions over 3. Get chemicals and promethium, and then we get the contract. Okay. Hmm. Capella biologist gives us profit factor. Seeker of the weak. It's a, a, an item. Gives security. This is. Okay, but not super strong. Scorcher gives us four security. I think I want f uh, forest fortresses. Need three plasteel and three weapons. We we'll can decide that later. Oh, okay, so we're still executing this one. And we're still executing this one too. Okay. Chemicals, Profit Factor, Profit Factor 1, Xenotech, Chirurgeon Med Kit. Chirurgeon Med Kit is actually not too bad either. Effectively removes traumas, which is nice to have in a pinch because traumas can be really tough. And we want Forest Fortresses, so actually let's do Capella Biologists, Pollen of the Unreal, Casbalic Emission, Drusians, Eyes of Joy Use, Complacency, Efficiency, Profit Factor, and Casbalic Emission. Okay, so let's go with 
as bi capella biologists so that we can go straight into forest fortresses and I think the chirurgeon med kits could be quite useful seven promethium is a lot adamantine xenotech weapons promethium let's see what else is on is in the system first I guess Adamantine. We actually have no adamantine at the moment, so. Let's just not use any of the extractium until we get more. Okay, let's save it here. Hive City. The Santiel's pride hives are oozing noxious haze veined with sulfurous streaks. The promethium fumes from the gigantic distilling cauldrons located beyond the temperature shields. Vast endless deadlands littered with spots of promethium stations and refineries separate the colossi of rockcrete and adamantine with its crown of gargantuan spires. The heat of this system's star has turned this world into a boiling but lucrative gland within the body of the house quarter protectorate. It's hard to tell what's more impressive, the grotesque grandeur of this place or its extreme toxicity. Okay. So we didn't get anything really from it. Alright. Well, in that case we're moving on and we're going to go to Cranach then. Okay. Let's go. Right, uneventful. Now, Telecos Epsilon. We. Okay. We have to chart new routes, okay? Nothing. Can we now. Yep, okay. Charting the route. Make it safe. Alright, perfect. So we now have. Um, a safe route between Cranach and Telecos Epsilon. Uh, if necessary, we can always chart a safe route to Mundus Valantius too, and also to Footfall if we really, we really want. So, but we can decide that later. Lord Captain, according to telemetry, we are in the system of Kiava Gamma, the main industrial world of the Von Valantius dynasty. However, our astropaths report that attempts to contact Governor Gaprak have been unsuccessful. But wait, Lord Captain, a new report. Kiava Gamma is sending a request to exchange data. Should we accept it? Uh, accept the transmission. As you command, Lord Captain. The Voxmaster switches to a nearby comm channel to relay your instructions to the crew. For several minutes, nothing happens. Uh, suddenly a deafening screech erupts from the bridge's vox system. You hear violent tirades of garbled binary code like the low chuckles of machinery. Lord Captain, interference detected in the compartment's vox system. Looks like the bridge is cut off from the rest of the void ship. Sector, Coronas Expanse, Region, Cinerus Maleficum, Prana. Pick report on events on the bridge when entering Kiava Gamma, recorded by server Skullwatcher 16. The void ship's bridge, sounds of working cogitators and officers' footsteps. The everyday scene is interrupted by an ear splitting beeping sound, followed by lumens going out. In the dim glow of candles and emergency lights, one of the officers in frame cries out, another falls to her knees, clutching her head. Over the beeping of voxes, shouts can only just be heard. What's going on? The doors are locked. We've lost contact with all compartments. One of the bridge officers turns to the throne. Lord Captain, the vox stations are malfunctioning and overloading the system. None of our outgoing transmissions are getting through. The incoming ones that do make it are distorted beyond interpretation. The Lord Captain gives the order to... Decipher the incoming Vox transmission at all costs, or continue sending orders from the bridge and request status updates. Uh, let's 
decipher them. Proceed. A team of decryption experts gets to work. The harder tethers are inserted into sockets as they connect to the cogitators. One of the Vox clerics leans over the console. Another is writing something on a piece of parchment, but then she bursts into maniacal laughter and stabs herself in the eye with a steel quill. Another scream. A tech priest who was mid-prayer tears himself to pieces with his own mechadendrites. More and more lunatics are mutilating themselves and lunging at others. A portion of pick recording damaged after contact with unknown object. An enforcer shoves a rabid servitor away from the Lord Captain as he... Strength 20, Coercion... Rushes to help the crew shouting out orders. The mad officers are attacking their comrades. The recording shows a glimpses of a torn head staining everything with blood and a Vox cleric howling in pain, clutching his broken arm. By the time they've tied up all those not killed in the scuffle, the bridge attendants can barely catch their breath. Damn. Scrap code. The voice belongs to the Onda engine who has turned to the Lord Captain from his station. We have been attacked with scrap code, a tech heresy designed to corrupt machines. The transmission received from the planet was infected with this taint, and it is now running through the ship's veins. Omnissire preserve us. The Voidborn officer appears before the Lord Captain once more. Whatever it is that's attacking us, we have a backup procedure that can circumvent the Vox barrier. In the atrium leading to the bridge, there is a terminal for an isolated system that still might be unaffected. Allow pop. The pipes over the void at the officer's heads burst and a blast of hot air flings the void borne away from the Lord Captain, his body slamming straight through a cogitator panel. The pick frame spins uncontrollably, the server skull was jolted by the gust. The pick recorder fogs over the vox, picking up the crackling of electricity and a death run. Gas on the bridge, a junior attendant shouts and instantly doubles over inhaling the poisoned air. Uh, give orders to evacuate immediately carry on with your duties until the very last but we're not running for our life evacuate immediately do we want to abandon the post yeah we have to evacuate the rogue trader personally oversees the evacuation bring the plasma cutters get the wounded to their exit Officers repeat his orders when the servo skull follows the following the rogue trader reaches the doors, they fall to the plasma cutters and crumble outward. The rogue trader is the last to leave the bridge. Leaning on a support beam, the rogue trader takes several deep breaths, trying to flush his lungs with air. Then he straightens, smooths his uniform and turns toward and heads toward a goal known only to him. The skull servo skull follows. The atrium is in a state of panic. Silhouettes skitter about in the dark hall, illuminated only by the flickering of emergency lumens. Curt orders and someone's feverish words of prayer can be heard. Having lost all communication, the beheaded ship is writhing in agony. It takes a while for the Lord Captain to find the cogitator mentioned by the fallen officer. The panel of the isolated terminal is riddled with cracks and bloodstains, and on the floor or by the terminal, a tech priest is lying in a heap with his head smashed and technical liquids mixed with blood oozing out of his port. The Lord Captain decides to take his chances restoring the terminal. The Rogue Trader rips the power key off the Tech Priest Mechadendra and opens the cover on the terminal. Sparks fly into his face, but he is confident in his manipulation of the tangled wires and clanging levers. After replacing the cover and ensuring that the system is restored, the Lord Captain brings up the required data on the screens. Maintenance Bay is sending out hundreds of desperate distress calls that have gone unanswered up to now. When the machines went out of control and started turning people insane, others, driven by some hateful and paranoid logic, started butchering the servants of the Adeptus Mechanicus. The tech priests have su sustained heavy losses, but the remains of the cult are still holding the line. Out of everything that's happening on the ship, the situation in the maintenance bay is the direst. The Lord Captain knows where help is needed most. He decides to head to the maintenance bay himself. Rogue Trader arrives not a moment too soon. The crew frightened out of their wits have already cornered the priests of the Omnissiah 
and are about to execute. The Lord Captain stands between the angry mob and the tech priest, his sheer presence already giving the crowd pause. Partially cutting off any objections from the crew, the rogue trader orders the officers he gathered on the way here to escort the mutineers out and set up a guard post outside the bay where the tech priests begin to offer desperate prayers to the crippled machine spirits. The walk to the bridge is uneventful. The crisis has passed. Although wounded and crippled, the ship nevertheless is returning to its normal operation. Life on the bridge is as bustling as ever, even though the people are surrounded by destruction. The senior officers have the situation under control and the people have been organized. The emergency crew have already finished repairing the pipes, the technomats are setting up cogitators and consoles, and the healers are bagging up what few corpses there are and examining the wounded. By the comm station, the rogue trader runs into the Vox Master. Praise the Emperor, you're in one piece, Lord Captain. The situation on board is satisfactory. I was just in the middle of setting up comm channels. Soon all the Vox casters will be fully operational. Another man appears in the pick frame, a junior officer completely out of breath, carrying a heap of scrolls. The Vox Master nods at him. Ah, here are the reports, Lord Captain. If you find yourself able to return to your station, I can immediately give you a rundown of the state of affairs on the ship. Okay, well, that was crazy. Lord Captain, the situation has been brought under control, more or less. It will take some time to eliminate the consequences of the attack completely, but the vessel is capable of motion. We may even be able to conduct a warp jump if you feel we should leave the system. Allow me to bring you up to date. Fortunately, the bridge suffered only minor losses. The reports mention only a few casualties that have already been replaced. Kiava Gamma went silent after transmitting the harmful signal. I will refrain from sending inquiries to the industrial world to avoid a second attack. I am afraid we have exhausted our options for remote analysis. More information can only be obtained by closing the distance or even sending an away party to the planet's surface. The Vox clicks as Heinrichs joins the channel. The time has come to remind you about our agreement, Suge. I must be present in your entourage during your expedition to Kiava Gamma. I'm counting on your cooperation. The crew is awaiting further instructions, Lord Captain. Unknown ships around Kiava Gamma. Okay. Let's do some scanning first. Okay, nothing here. Okay. Save it here and let's see what this is all about. The dwarf planet is marked on the Von Valancis Protectorate charts as Atel and serves as a backup source of water for the habitable worlds of neighboring systems. Due to the abundance of bacteria prof proliferating in that Atel hydrosphere, the extraction of ice was stopped half, the, half a century ago, but much to your officer's surprise, the augers detected an unidentified mining rig deep underground. Presumably, the excavation is aimed at extracting clay materials near the planet's core, enriched with iron and other metals. Uh, persuasion. Contact the Extractium's Vox station. The Extractium turns out to be Incendia Corda's latest investment, whose domain is located just within a few jumps from the Cranach system. While this world is of little value to the Von Valencius dynasty, your officers see this gesture as an attempt to test the boundaries of the newly minted rogue trader's leniency. Uh, Seneschal considers this act unacceptable and assists on confiscating and rebasing this extractium that was illegally set up in Von Valencius territory. Pascal notes the unusual composition of Atel's core Subsequent development will allow the extraction of rare refractory metals. Heeding his advice, the rogue trader decides to keep the extractium for himself. Graciously allows Incendia Corda no destroy the extractium. Uh, rogue, eh, that's not very good. 
and insists on confiscating and rebasing this extraction. That was okay. Let's keep the extraction for ourselves. Your people easily assume control as the frightened workers and the token security crew do not even attempt to resist. The extractium's machines are restarted shortly after. The amassed containers filled with precious ore are delivered to the flagship's cargo hold. Okay. More plasteel. Okay. Uh... I think, actually, I'm going to go back to the bridge and have a chat with uh, Vigdis. Okay, so here's Vigdis. Let's talk to her after all that chaos with the, uh, with the, uh, tainted chaos, chaos tainted uh, Vox message. Lord Captain, the ship informed me about your minute meeting. Okay. Well, apparently there's nothing to say here. No info. Okay. Thought there would actually be something here, but apparently not. What about this? Uh, nope. Okay. Let's save it here. Let's talk to the bridge technomat if we can. Nothing. Alright. Well. Uh, let's see. Okay. Alright, we've got this to level 2 now. Ceramite plating protects the vessel from harm, negating 5 points of damage on each side. Very nice. Repulsor shield. 80 points of protection for each sector. This amount is doubled against enemy kinetic attacks. Okay. Griffin pattern torpedo tubes. Five plasma torpedoes with 19 damage warheads. Uh, riser pattern plasma battery. Long range broadside. Okay. Take that. Scrap box. Glimmer pattern void shield. Okay. Alright, now reputation. Nothing tradable. Uh, let's add the cargo. Add the cargo. We did have void Drakari trophies, did we not? Yeah. Do these do anything other than act as cargo? Because if they were, weren't were just cargo, would they have not gone straight to cargo instead of our inventory? Hmm, not sure. Uh, Alright, well. Not sure about that, but let's go to Opticon. Reputation. 3950. Let's just trade them all in. Ooh, okay, we got two levels out of that actually. Haywire grenade combat manipulator. Whenever the wearer uses a non attacking consumable item, it counts as an attack of a different type than the previous attack for the purposes of versatility. Interesting. Targeting visor. Increases the wearer's chances to hit at targets at a range of 10 or further by 20%. Okay. Interesting. Now, let's see. Have we gotten any other... Have we unlocked anything else? No. We need more levels in this one. Okay. Fair enough. Ah, uh, whoops. Wrong one. I think... It's the same for everything else. We need to level these guys up first. Hex rifle. Interesting. 
peripheral visor. Each time the wearer spends 10 stacks of tactical advantage. Okay, commissar boots. Fair enough. Precise bolter, large medikit. Fusion gun. Heavy stubber. Storm bolter. Mazoa pattern sniper rifle. So we could also go with this one. It's a solid projectile though. Bane of Sorrow. Laser weapon. Okay. Dark Lance is Drakari weapon. Fellowship of the Void. Okay. Splinter pistols. Arch, Arch militants boots. Okay. Nothing too much here. So I think we've gotten everything we need out of this one. We don't have much in the way of Kazbala Commission. Do we have stuff we can trade? Yes. Trade 7,500. Commissar boots. Hex rifle and the peripheral visor. Drakari void trophies. Uh, okay, well, uh, not sure if there's anything else there, but let's do right, cargo, ship, yep, okay. So, this negates five points of damage. Repulsor shield, 80 points, but doubled ca uh, against kinetic attacks. Riser pattern, plasma battery. Let's go with that. Griffin Patent Torpedo Tubes. Dorsal Starbreaker Lance Weapon is not necessarily all that great. Did do think I prefer the macro cannons, to be honest. Medium range, short range, well... Keep the Starbreaker for now. It's longer range and it, in theory it does more damage. So, Ship components. 5% crit chance. Okay. Add to cargo. Uh, 11. Well, that's the one we're not sure about. Torpedo tubes. That one's clearly worse. So let's go to cargo. Torpedoes. What's this one? 70, 80. Enemy blast attacks. So blast attacks. It doubles the protection. Okay. Mazoa lance weapon. We got one of those. We can't use two of them, so that's fine. Mars pattern prow battery. We already have Griffin Pattern, so we don't need these guys. Add to cargo. Uh, okay, well. I think that's enough for the ship upgrades, so I think this is a good place to, to end the episode. We will come back and deal with the, uh, deal with the, uh, seemingly hostile ships. Uh, that are encircling Kiava Gamma. So we'll take care of those guys and then we'll head down into Kiava Gamma itself. Which means we I will need to level up Heinrich so that he can come with us because I think he's going to be... We're going to be forced to take him, which is fine. And I just have to decide who we want to drop for Heinrich's. Probably Elliot, because Heinrichs will be, yeah, another frontliner, and he can do some damage with, with, uh, Psyker abilities. Although Cassia has shown she can, she, seemingly she can tank quite well, so, anyway, uh... We can decide that at the start of the next episode when we actually get down to Kiava Gamma. But yeah, thanks a lot for watching. We 
been an interesting episode dealing with uh, void chip combat and there's a bit more to come in the next episode too so uh, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you then